Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video, and always to those that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. Today's study, Can the Jesus Christ of Christianity Save You? What say you? Now we're going to look at this because of the things that are going on in the world and they're happening in biblical proportions and we're seeing probably starting to witness the end of, end of the age of grace. Now to make a, a Bible study with this kind of theme or title, I'm going to show you from God's word now of Jesus Christ himself. First, we'll look at the Jesus Christ of Christianity, if he can actually save you. Now, the Jesus Christ of Christianity is of the religion of Christianity. So we should have, if you're a Christian and you uh, proclaim to be one and affiliate yourself with the realm of the religion of Christianity and the teachings of Christianity and follow the Jesus Christ of Christianity, I'm sure you're going to expect to me to show you biblical references to this Jesus Christ. As I always do in my videos, uh, I will show you from Scripture the truth of the very Word of God. Now, if you want to open your Bibles, uh, you can at this point, and start looking for the Jesus Christ of Christianity. Now, let me make it perfectly clear. There you will never find in this Bible anywhere about Christianity as a religion. And you won't find the Jesus Christ of Christianity in there. What you will find is the very one that changed himself into the angel of light, proclaiming to be the Jesus Christ of Christianity's religion that can save Christians today. Now, they have a plethora of doctrines, if you will, that cover everything from traditions uh, that they pull from the scripture, uh, traditions of man, traditions of their churches. They rely on church history. They go back and they will develop doctrines from these historical facts. And so many times they will base their rationale, their, if you want to call it their reasoning, that they can justify what it is they believe by the doctrines that they promote and teach and preach are based on historical figures other than Jesus Christ. You see, it's teachings from what they refer to as church elders of the past, of historical significance, and it's, they refer to the church all the time. And there is a denomination that refers to the, they think is the original church, which is Catholicism. But even Protestants uh, in their Reformation, and they're continuing to split apart from that time, hasn't changed. They also refer to it as the church. It's all about the church. Now, in their finite minds and finite wisdoms, they're relying on the information of their religion as to what Christianity has taught them over the ages. And they're always uh, quoting mankind. You will find this when you see Christians. If you want to have a good time and enjoy a good chuckle, or in some cases be totally disgusted, Watch Christians debate one another. It can be on any topic. does not matter. You will find how they use these terms and they use these references quoting mankind more so than on the very word of God. Because they will tell you, well, this is how it's to be interpreted. This is how it's to be explained. This is how I look at it. And that fits right in with the doctrine of Christianity uh, in the times that... Uh, the word in today. Christianity is a religion founded by mankind and the head of the religion 
And you see, anytime you have a religion, I don't care what it is, it can be Jewish religion, it can be uh, Protestant religions, uh, denominations of all kinds, Catholicism, Mormonism, they all have somebody in their church history that was the head of their church, don't they? Of course, they will tell you and Christianity was founded by Jesus Christ. Well, you can't find that in Scripture, so I can't give you any biblical facts on this whatsoever. Not the Jesus Christ of Christianity. It does not exist in Scripture. The closest I can show you is something that is found in the writings of Paul the Apostle. And that is going to be found in the book of 1 Corinthians. Excuse me, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go there right now and look at what it says. Book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the nearest biblical definition I can find of the Jesus Christ that is of Christianity's religion. And you'll find that in verse 13 of chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. This is what it says. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Here it is in verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Did you notice the, the text, how it's written? Is. That means that's a now, that's a present verb that's happened. I don't know if anybody's ever pointed it out to you, but that's the closest I can get to the Jesus Christ of Christianity is the angel of light found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And then he goes on in verse 15 to say something very important because he rener inner reiterates what he said in verse 13. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And it's very interesting because that is a Jesus Christ of Christianity. Now, can this Jesus Christ of Christianity save you? That's the big question of this study. So if the Jesus Christ of Christianity actually, from the biblical sense, is the angel of light that is already transformed, transformed into the angel of light, who is Satan, that's what scripture says, can he save you? Well, you Christians are brought up in the doctrine of Christianity saying that he can. You see, the Jesus Christ of Christianity, he'll tell you that he died for you on the cross. He shed his blood for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. He will give you this gospel for your salvation. Then he'll turn around and also tell you that the things that he told his nation of Israel, the Jews, back before the cross, were all for and to you today also. He told them they need to be born again to enter the kingdom, to see the kingdom of God, I should say. Then he told them they need to endure until the end. And then Jesus Christ of Christianity told them that they needed to keep the commandments. They needed to be under the law. They need to work for their salvation because there's a possibility that they could lose their salvation. That's all part and partial to the gospel of the kingdom. But that's the Jesus Christ of Christianity telling you today through your Christianity religion that's been around since the third century. That's all part and partial to your Salvation. Also, you have to be baptized. But he's very clever because he realizes what is going on on the other side of the spectrum because there is another part of the spectrum that talks about salvation by grace through faith. And there's a lot of Christian, excuse me, Christians in the realm of Christianity that will proclaim this. So what does he do? As the angel of light, he goes ahead and accepts that and tells them, you can be saved by grace through faith, but you need to do these other things. You know, some of these works I told you, you still need to be born again to see the kingdom of God. And you might lose your salvation. Then you still need to be baptized. But you can tell your followers that the baptism isn't anything to do with being saved because you're saved by grace, see, through faith. 
So the, the baptism that you're going to have is going to be for a witness that you follow me. He's very clever. And he says, oh, you're not going to be under the yoke of bondage. You're going to be under grace now. But you still need to go to church on Sunday. You still need to tithe. You need to keep the commandments. And he will deny all of what Jesus Christ of Scripture teaches. All of it. He will water it down. He'll twist it. He'll change it. He'll pervert it. And he's been doing that for centuries, millenniums now, telling you that Jesus Christ of Christianity can save you because I am the Christianity Jesus Christ, Satan, will proclaim. You think you're kneeing, you're, you're taking a knee and bowing to the Jesus Christ of Christianity that can save you? That all the world will uh, bow before him and proclaim that he is Jesus Christ, Lord to the Son of God? He'll tell you all this. On the surface, see, he'll tell you all these things. He'll even go through all of the books from Genesis to Revelation telling you all about the history of his father and how he dealt with the nation of Israel, his people. And then he'll tell you how he came on this earth in the form of a man and dwelt among his own people, teaching and preaching to them the gospel of the kingdom for their salvation. But he ran into a snag, see, because he didn't become the angel of light until after the cross. Because where did we read about him being transformed into the angel of light? It's in the books of Romans to Philemon, which was after the cross. See, Jesus Christ of Christianity will deny what happened at the cross fully. He will deny the divisions of the cross. He will deny that there was a time's past where they were under the law. He will deny now that we're under the but now, which is of grace through faith only, and that law was abolished. He'll deny that, and he will deny the ages to come when Jesus Christ comes a second time, when the angel of light is actually here on the surface in your religion of Christianity, teaching you Christians that you can be saved if you listen to the Jesus Christ of Christianity and you stay away from anybody that challenges it. Because on the surface, he gives you what it is you want to hear. He gives, it, he gives to you exactly what he gave to the, your parents, to your grandparents, to the generations before you in the uh, religion of Christianity, building such a uh, stubborn traditions that you cannot get out of. And you don't want to get out of it. You're very comfortable listening to the Jesus Christ of Christianity because he's very tolerant. He's very loving. He's very forgiving, very accepting. He'll take anybody and everybody. He will not tell you you should be against gay marriages. You should not. You should tolerate and love one another because I am all of love. That's part of the Jesus Christ of Christianity. And there's some of you that will argue that fact. But see, you're becoming confused because of what you're seeing in the Jesus Christ of Christianity and what the Jesus Christ of Christianity teaches you. Because he'll tell you that you can be saved by grace through faith. But you have to do all these other things. You're still under the yoke of bondage with the Jesus Christ of Christianity because he denies the Jesus Christ of Scripture abolished the law. But you see, he's not going to tell you, tell you that. He's going to present everything on the surface. And everything that he presents on the surface stands for Christianity today. It has since its beginning. The church fathers. And how people believe what it is they choose to believe because of the church fathers, the traditions of the fathers, the traditions of the church, the traditions of Christianity. It is loaded with that. And there is nothing traditional about the Jesus Christ of Scripture. But there is with the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is the angel of light. He, Satan has been and is transformed into the angel of light. Today, that's what scripture says. It's something we learned about today. You've been told that from your pulpits. 
your preachers and your teachers, you probably haven't been because bar none, they're not going to admit that they're the servants of, they're his ministers of righteousness, that they were transformed into his ministers of righteousness. No way. Why would they do that? They would be exposing the lie. They would be exposing what's under the hidden surface of the great lie of Christianity. It makes everything look so good. And as long as you continue doing these works of Christianity, you're following the Jesus Christ of Christianity. He'll use the Bible to his advantage, to keep you confused. Confused enough that you'll follow whatever it is he tells you to do because he's using his ministers that he's transformed into the ministers of righteousness because he is the angel of light today. That is a Jesus Christ of Christianity that claims he can save you today. What about the Jesus Christ of Scripture? The very one that died on the cross for you. The very one that taught you everything you need for your salvation today as he had taught those in times past a different gospel. But it was for their salvation as well. You see, the Jesus Christ of Christianity will tell you that's foolishness. Don't listen to these people. Don't you go reading the scripture on your own because you're incapable of understanding it. I want you lost. I want your minds blinded by me. And I want to keep you captive. I don't want somebody coming along to tell you you're actually opposing yourself if God would preadventure giving you repentance on the acknowledging of the truth, which is the gospel of salvation according to the revelation of the mystery. God forbid, I will not have that. I want you in my captivity at my will to do the things that Christianity tells you to do for your salvation today. I am never going to tell you that it's a false salvation. That's going to be found out on your own when it is way too late. And I have done my dastardly, deadly duty. Is to drag you into hell first. See, I'm not going to be in hell, by the way. I'm going to skip hell, but I'm going to be ending up in the lake of fire. I know where my destiny is. But you don't know yours. You think you do because I'm telling you a false destiny. I'm telling you a lie. I'm telling you a false salvation message. Because I'm the Jesus Christ of Christianity. I have transformed myself into the angel of light already. But there's nobody going to teach you that. God forbid. Because they're blinded by me. Satan says. Your minds are blinded. By the God of this world, in those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, of the scriptures, should shine upon them. And if you do not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ according to scripture, you are lost. That's what the Bible says. And then he goes on to tell you about you being captive by his will. The angel of light of all things, who is the Jesus Christ of Christianity, stands there and has you held captive under the yoke of bondage, which he keeps you under. So that will always keep you from grace. And in today's age of grace, you cannot be saved by the law. <clears throat> because no man and no flesh can be justified in the presence of God by the deeds of the law. That's what scripture says. Because Jesus Christ said a few things that are very important. Now the Jesus Christ of scripture says this about himself. And I can show you scripture now, if you want. I'm not going to go through it all because it would be a 10-hour video. But you can start in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you can read all the way through the book of Revelation about the Jesus Christ of scripture. You read about how the past, in the times past, from Genesis to Malachi, about Jesus Christ of scripture. And you can read from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, Hebrews, Jude, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, about the message of salvation for the Jews, for those people that were under the law. It's all there, plain and simple. The Jesus Christ of Scripture, of scripture hides nothing. There is no surface and no underneath. It's all right there, totally transparent for you to know about. And then he also gives you the salvation message for you today, 
in this age of grace from Romans to Philemon, which he reveals to Paul as the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ to Paul, because Paul was a chosen vessel of Jesus Christ in the Spirit. The Bible is loaded with the Jesus Christ of Scripture, mentions nothing about the Jesus Christ of Christianity except that it is Satan in disguise. And Jesus Christ confronted his people Israel many times, calling them there of the father of the devil. They are vipers, they are hypocrites, they are liars. They are the blind leading the blind. So you have all this. And let's look at what John's, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, I call it the book of John. Look what it says in chapter 4, verse 24. He says something very important, that Jesus Christ of Scripture now, that is to us, it is for us to know about. But he was telling his nation of Israel, the Jews, it was to them and for them. And this is what it said. Chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we will find, when we get into the but now of the cross, when the Jesus Christ of Scripture, of Scripture totally shows you the truth of what the cross did and the divisions that the cross made, you'll find that Jesus Christ is totally in the spirit. He was talking about himself here. And another important verse that he told his nation of Israel in the book of John Chapter 13, verse 20. And this is what he said. Now listen very carefully to what he said. He said, Verily, verily, which means truthfully, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Now the Jesus Christ of Scripture is very plain and clear in the truth. Of what he says. Now the Jesus Christ of Christianity, oh, is clever, he thinks, because he sends you ministers of righteousness. And he sends them to you daily, monthly, yearly. There's always a change within your church that you attend. You're going to have a pastor for so long, and then another one come along, another one come along, another one come along, and on and on and on it goes. That's his clever way of saying this is what he means when he said this verse. It's not what it meant. Jesus Christ said in Scripture, whomsoever I sent. Well, who did Jesus Christ of Scripture send? Well, he sent the 12 apostles to the nation of Israel. He sent the apostle Paul to the Gentiles. In the age of grace, where we are saved by grace through faith in the Spirit, that is the only one he sent. That he didn't send any more after that. What does that do to your Christianity religion? What does that do to the Jesus Christ of your Christianity when the Jesus Christ of Christianity keeps sending you over and over and over again these ministers that he transforms into ministers of righteousness on a daily, monthly, weekly, yearly Decades, centuries of time. He keeps going and going with it. And Jesus Christ sent Paul. Why did Jesus Christ send Paul? Well, the scripture says he was a chosen vessel of Paul. Well, where do we read that? Take your Bibles and open up to the book of uh, Acts, ladies and gentlemen. And it needless to say, there's one verse that says it all right here in verse 15 of Acts chapter 9. But the Lord said unto him, if you want to read the verses prior to that, it's about a guy named Ananias that was gone to tell Saul of Tarsus that he'll receive his sight because Saul of Tarsus is blinded and Ananias didn't want to go. Are you scared of Saul of Tarsus? Who later became Paul the Apostle. But in verse 15, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ of Scripture in the Spirit told Ananias. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he, Saul, is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. That's the last one he sent. And he said, Whom else, whomsoever I send, he that receiveth, whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth the one that sent me. 
And yet you have the Christianity religion under, under the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is Satan, transformed himself into the angel of light, proclaims to have new people coming in all the time that he sends to you. He puts them in their, your path. He does this for, he is a chosen vessel. He's anointed one coming into your church. Oh, he's anointed. You can just see it the way he preaches and teaches. You can sense the Holy Spirit. You can feel the Holy Spirit in him because Jesus Christ sent him. It's his calling, you know. It's his vocation, you know. When the Bible is very specific. And how do we know Paul was the last one to be sent? Why would that be made a statement and, and can it be confirmed in Scripture? Well, it's very interesting. Because it can be. And where do we find this? Well, we find this only in the writings of Paul the Apostle, who was Saul at that time, once he became a chosen vessel of Jesus Christ. The revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ was revealed to Paul only, no one else. The Jesus Christ of Christianity totally denies that. The Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is the angel of light that he's transformed into already, is Satan. And he tells you something on the surface. He tells you, I sense all of them. And he says, he's just a continuation of the gospel that I preached to my nation of Israel, you see. So you must continue with the one gospel, including Paul's writings, of course, but don't practice them solely for your salvation. Because look what Paul says in the book of Colossians, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I said that Paul was the last one sent because Jesus Christ, again, look it up, chapter 13, verse 30 of, or 20 of John. He says, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me, to you, to fulfill the word of God. So there's need to be no one more sent after Paul, not according to Jesus Christ of Scripture, who is the Jesus Christ of the age of grace, who is the Jesus Christ in the dispensation of the grace of God that we are in today. And we're going to finish it with another verse. Keep going to your right to the book of Titus. It's still in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, a doctrine for the body of Christ church that is for you and to you for your salvation today. Found in Romans through Philemon. Go to the book of Titus. You'll find the book of Titus right after 2 Timothy. And following up with what G Paul said in Colossians, that he was to he fulfilled the word of God. Look what he says. And, and let's look at chapter 2 of the book of Titus. Let's look at verse 11. For the grace of God, which was given to Paul in the dispensation of the grace of God to fulfill the word of God, says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. What message of salvation has appeared to you? I want to ask you, is your message of salvation appeared to you through the angel of light, the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who isn't even a part of this? It's all on lies, deceivableness, the vices of Satan to confuse you, to get you locked in because you're lost. You're held captive by him. <coughs> he says that. And he wants you to stay captive by him. As long as you're in the realm of Christianity, professing to be Christians, following the doctrine of Christianity as a religion that doesn't even show up in this book. Yet you want to follow it. I don't have to ask the question why. I know why. I read scripture. And Jesus Christ of scripture teaches me why. That's the only answers I need. Now, I just showed on you here that there is no one sent after Paul. If there is no one sent after Paul, the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ is to be what? Explained. Taught. Not anything new. 
it is just to be taught exactly the way the Bible teaches it. You don't alter it. You don't change it. You don't add to it. You don't take away from it. You leave it as Jesus Christ told Paul to write it. And you watch Christianity. You look at the people that profess to be Christians. Listen to them when they sit down and they have differences. They have differences all the time. There is constant debate, constant confusion, constant controversy, constant splitting away, constant confusion in the body of Christianity's religion that claim to be Christians and they claim to be members of the body of Christ Church when there is no unity within their religion. There's total unity within the body of Christ Church. There has to be, because Jesus Christ said so. And Paul wrote it in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Please read them. That's where you find total uh, con uh, unity. And there is no controversy in the body of Christ doctrine. Read chapter 3, verse 16 of 1 Timothy. For without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. That's without controversy. There's no controversy within the body of Christ Church because the body of Christ Church does not belong and is not of this world today. The Jesus Christ of Christianity tells you a whole different story. He'll tell you, well, you're the a direct representative of the body of Christ here on this earth, you see, because of the kingdom that is going to be on this earth. And he'll recite the, how Jesus Christ of Scripture taught his nation of Israel how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he'll run right to that. And that is be the rationale. That'll be the uh, reasoning for to Christianity to throw that doctrine in there. That's how the body of Christ Church can be on this earth today. Yet, there is no religion, no church in this world that can exist without a leader, somebody that is head of the church. It's always been that way. Go look through church history. I don't care what denomination you look up. Well, if that's the case, there has to be a physical presence on this earth for the body of Christ Church. There is a, somebody that's in, that's in charge or the head of each denomination. So if you have over 1,200 denominations in this world, you're going to have 1,200 uh, heads of state, if you will. How can that be? When there's only one head in the body of Christ Church, that's Jesus Christ. Where is Jesus Christ today, I ask you Christians? Is he on this earth? Of course not. He's in heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father, ruling and reigning from heaven, gathering his body of Christ church, that he will come down in the clouds and take away with him. He won't even come on this earth to pick up his body of Christ church, the ones that are still there when the age of grace is, is fulfilled, because he cannot be contaminated by sin, which this world is full of. But the Jesus Christ of Christianity tells you something totally different again. All you have to do is be born again. All you have to do is keep the commandments. Read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, especially the book of John, and you'll have salvation. You can add the things of Paul, the apostle. But let's keep you under the law. You see, the Jesus Christ of Christianity teaches that he had divided Scripture into three divisions of the cross, the times past, the but now, and the ages to come. Read Philip, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 7, verses 11 and 12 and 13, and 14 and 15. That talks about the ages to come, the but now, and the times past. He talks about, and he talks about abolishing the law. You want to try and keep the Ten Commandments? In fact, I just got to throw this in there. I watched the debate just to get information on how ridiculous Christians can really be. They debated on the Sabbath. One guy said you didn't need to observe the, the Sabbath according to what the Jewish law said. This other guy said, oh yeah, you have to keep the Jewish law of Sabbath. It was ridiculous because neither one 
is saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. They claim to be saved by grace through faith, yet look what they're doing. They're doing everything that Jesus Christ, the scripture tells them not to do, but they will tell you it's okay to debate and be a, uh, an apologetics and to study the word of God by hermeneutics and to interpret things by using church history and authors from the past, scholars of the church in the past, to explain to you what it means. They're lost. They're confused. And that's what they do to present something like this debate. Because both souls were totally confused. One was really ill-prepared. The one that told, argued the fact, if you will, that you didn't need to keep the Sabbath was totally off the wall with what he was trying to show. And he used scripture, by the way. And the guy on the other one was telling you to keep the Sabbath, the Shabbat, as they call it in the Old Testament and Hebrew scriptures. He was using scripture among scripture among scripture among scripture. I wanted to call him and ask him if he was under the law today. You see, none of them, and the guy arguing against it, never brought in the age of grace where Jesus Christ abolished the law. He abolished the law on the cross. Look what he says. Read Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. Galatians is written specifically to tell you today, you are not under the law, but under grace. And he says it so plainly in chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And let's just read that to you. So you can understand what the Jesus Christ of Scripture says against what the Jesus Christ of Christianity preaches. Open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 5, start in verse 1. This is what it says. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, the law. Verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you are circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. It's part of the law. Practice the law. And if you break one, you're guilty of them all. We know that. So scripture says, but look what he says in verse 3. For I testify again if to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now this guy promoting the Sabbath didn't say anything about that he needed to keep any of the other commandments. Isn't that interesting? He didn't have to do sacrifices, but he had to keep the Sabbath. Would he lose his salvation if he didn't keep the Sabbath? I wanted to ask him if he ever missed a day in his entire life that he didn't honor the Sabbath by going to church, as he calls it. It's not only a day of rest. You must worship on that day. That was his argument. So you're dead to the whole law. Look what he says in verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So the Jesus Christ of Christianity tells you, no, oh, you keep the law. You're justified by faith and you're justified by the law. And you're justified by the works of the law, by the way, because you need to believe what it is James tells you in his book. When the Jesus Christ of Scripture, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we are in, because Paul said it, not only in the book of Romans, but he also said it in the book of Colossians, in his dispensation of the grace of God. And I believe he said it in the book of Acts that we are under. Or the gospel of God, he called it. But the dispensation of the grace of God that we are in today tells you that if you're under the law, you have fallen from grace. The Jesus Christ of Christianity is not under grace. That should tell you something. That Satan could never be under grace. <clears throat> so it stands to reason from Scripture that the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is the angel of light, already transformed into, along with his ministers of righteousness that he may transform them into, are not of grace. They cannot be. According to the word of God, he is a false Christ. He's the Christ. He's the Jesus Christ of Christianity that tells you he can save you today. Just listen to him and follow him. And you will end up not only in hell, but at the great white throne judgment and cast into the lake of fire right along with your Jesus Christ of Christianity. You don't have a chance. Yet, 
The majority of people that listen to a video like this or believe them Christians and believe in Christianity will never falter. They'll never change. They'll just think we're crazy. We're somebody that makes no sense, wants to argue. I'm not arguing. I'm showing you what Jesus Christ of Scripture says. You make up your own minds. I'm not out to win anything. I'm out to warn you about the Jesus Christ of Christianity, that he cannot save you because Jesus Christ of Christianity has no grace in him. And we are saved by grace through faith today in the dispensation of the grace of God found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is a doctrine for the body of Christ church today for our salvation found in Romans 2, finally, and given to us by the gospel of Paul, according to the revelation of the mystery that Jesus Christ preached unto him. Look that up. Chapter 16, verses 25 and 26 of the book of Romans, and you'll find it is by faith now and faith alone. And faith is mentioned so many times from Romans to Philemon. And I've always said, when you read it like that, why don't you just try to put Jesus Christ's scripture's name in there when you see the word faith and see what happens. Where is this gospel found that can save the lost? And those are taken captive, where God may pre-adventure give them uh, repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth, of the true gospel, where you can rightly divide the word of truth and study the word of God the way Jesus Christ commands you to do it in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Well, this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. The gospel plainly says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by faith, and it's by grace through faith. Because he says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, verse 8 says, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, does any man should boast. That's the Jesus Christ of Scripture. That is not the Jesus Christ of Christianity. He'll tell you all kinds of different things. He will tell you what it is you want to hear. He will teach individualism. He will deny self-sacrifice. Live for yourself. Make sure you have enough for yourselves. And then you can probably go over and help other people. But make sure. Because in the end, ladies and gentlemen, the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is not of grace, cannot save even himself. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. Home Bible study. My home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thank you. And always remember, until next time, we'll leave the light on for you.